I think we're starting to really see the numbers and, and the, the concerns and the damage. Uh, but I, I fear that we're going to look at this well into 2022 for small businesses, and they're really going to feel this, not just a little bit during the holidays, but well into that. According to the latest survey done by the National Federation of Independent Business, almost half of businesses are significantly impacted by the supply chain disruptions, as over 90 ships are waiting at the ports of Los Angeles. We are seeing the problems of a number of regulations and log jams that our policymakers have an opportunity to really fix, but they're just not doing it as quickly as they need to. My guest today is John Kabatak, California State Director for NFIB. Today, he discusses how the congestion at the ports will impact the broader economy and why California State needs to do more. So we're urging our policymakers to open those ports, do what they can now, and declare a state of emergency, which it should be. I'm Siamai Korami, welcome to California Insider. Thank you, so great to be back. Love the Epic Times. Thank you for that. And we want to talk to you about the ports and the impact on small businesses, mm -hmm. and businesses in general in California. There are delays at the port, there are ships waiting. People are not getting, businesses are complaining that they're not actually getting the, the products that they need to sell. How has this impacted the businesses? Well, it's, it's been a severe impact. I think we're starting to really see the numbers and, and the, the concerns and the damage. Uh, but I, I fear that we're going to look at this well into 2022 for small businesses, and they're really going to feel this, not just a little bit during the holidays, but well into that. And how is it impacting the small businesses? Is it that they don't get the items or customers are not ordering because there's delays or... It's a combination of things. You know, first of all, we have the clogging itself, right? We have sh uh, cargo ships that are offshore that is just physically, you know, logistically, just not making it to shore and getting on land and into those stores. So that's a big problem. But then on top of that, we are seeing the problems of a number of regulations uh, and log jams that our policymakers have an opportunity to really fix, but they're just not doing it as quickly as they need to. Uh, we have problems at the ports uh, with uh, the challenges of overregulation with warehouses, distribution centers, uh, with these truckers who really need to have more flexibility in what they do. So it's, 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 you can't put your finger on one thing and say it's all these ships offshore and we got to get them in. It's, it's getting them here, but we need our policymakers can really make a difference by not just unclogging that big pipe pipeline, but making sure that we're getting that stuff done and we're doing it in a way that helps businesses and consumers get what they need faster. And they can do that pr pretty quickly. Now, some people wonder, is this a trucking issue? Is this a chassis shortage? There's, there's, we've talked to some experts and different experts are telling us different things. And uh, everybody's pointing fingers at other people. So uh, what are your thoughts of this, of the root cause? We know that the supply increased. We know that there is more ships coming, 20% more ships coming to these ports. Um, what are uh, some other components that you guys have seen? Sure. And I will tell you, you know, the National Federation of Independent Business, where I serve as the California director, we represent about 14,000 small businesses here, about 350,000 nationwide. And we talk to a lot of these small businesses, and they're very, very concerned. Um, every, uh, we do a, a regular survey, and we've been doing surveys of COVID uh, issues. And actually, uh, our most recent survey found that 50%, about 50% of the small business members we have feel that supply chain disruptions are go uh, have been a big problem, are a significant issue. And about 50% also made it very clear that, that this is deeply affecting their sales, their sales already. What we also found was about, uh, in terms of where they're prognosticating this, we were talking about timeline. Uh, I think we found that about 62% of the small business owners have said that um, this has been a problem that's gotten worse over the past three months, through the end, pretty much through the end of 2021. About 72% have told us that they anticipate this being a problem th well into next year for another six months. Um, but the problem is really, you know, when we're talking about the, you know, the issue of truckers and things, it's no different than what we're talking to the average small business owners, what they're facing on Main Street right now, and that is the trucking companies and the truckers, there is a big challenge with trying to find qualified labor. 
there is a labor shortage even in the trucking industry right now that we are finding. So uh, I know we talked to the uh, Trucking Association and others, but also NFIB members who have trucking companies. It's very challenging for them. Um, I think uh, we are also wanting to make sure that um, that the that there's more independent contractor flexibility with truckers because we need that right now because um, it's very difficult to ask a lot of these folks to stop their trucks um, to have to be so stringent by the guidelines here that they can't get that stuff into Los Angeles into the Riverside into Sacramento we need to make sure that there's that our policymakers are loosening those not be creating reckless laws they're basically making sure that we're getting, giving those truckers and our delivery professionals a chance to get that stuff once they get to the docks over to those small businesses. So there's an opportunity to do that, and I think that we can act on that. Do you think the state leaders, with all that we've had going on in the last few years, businesses leaving, yeah. and all the challenges that businesses are facing, do you think the state leaders are able to see this and help these businesses with all these challenges that they are facing? I do. You know, um, I know that uh, Orange County, for example, had that terrible um, environmental spill. Uh, and I know uh, it took something like that disaster, I think, to wake up both uh, legislative leaders on the left and the right to say, you know, that that might have might have stemmed from a cargo ship or from uh, the from the overclogged, um, you know, offshore uh, ships. Right. I think, again, it these policymakers, until their back is up against the wall, many of them just won't act. But until it happens in their own backyard, they really don't act. So one thing I just encourage uh, viewers, all Californians, you know, uh, others who are in, you know, out there, is to contact your policymakers, ask them what they're doing here, um, urge them to take this very seriously. And I think also, you know, really share with your own legislator, your mayor, your council member, you know, what your books look like. You don't have to share every number. Your CPA may not want that. Um, but you can tell them what the metrics are of how this is going to look and that, you know, your, your, your time and your dollars are running out. And uh, I think those kinds of local advocacy from the, from the small business owners to their own, that, that, they, that are representing them, should hopefully shake them up. I hope it would. Do you have any other thoughts for our audience? Well, I really believe that it's important for small business owners to be involved. Uh, the NFIB, our small business organization, we represent about 13,000 small business owners. We've been at the table making sure that Main Street has that voice. Uh, and so I do encourage, you know, our website's nfib.com, at the risk of being an egregious plugger here. Um, but it's important. I think we had a member say, you know, what's, what's great about a group like NFIB is to let a small business owner know in this, in this very scary time that they are not alone, that they have um, as you were saying, you know, groups that they can network with, um, that, that suppliers uh, can, can maybe network with and get other supplies and goods, that they just know they can talk to people about best practices, but most importantly, that the small business community is able to band together as an army and, and a really important Main Street army to let our policymakers know we aren't Wall Street, uh, we aren't the unions, we aren't the lawyers, uh, we are the number one providers of jobs and our economy and our tax base. So please don't, don't leave us offshore. Help us now, help us immediately, and let's get things going again. Well, thank you. Thank you. So nice to see you, and happy holidays to you.